Hi, my name is Kai. I'm a software developer and business analyst and I've been following IOTA since 2018. In this video I'll be demonstrating how to create a logging example app using the Flutter Rust bridge. The logging example is a section from the IOTA for Flutter tutorial aimed at developers who want to create Rust and Flutter apps. The tutorial covers the basics and provides step-by-step -step guidance along with links and tips for installing the necessary tools. Simple apps are created and complexity is gradually increased. Later on in the tutorial the Rust libraries for distributed ledger technology from Shimmer or IOTA are utilized. At the core of this video is demonstrating how log messages generated in Rust can be sent to Flutter and processed there. If you are new here I recommend watching my previous video How Everything Works Together which provides context on app development and distributed ledger technology. I publish a message but instead of directly writing it into the chat UI it's sent to a function of my Rust library. The Rust library uses an internal logger to generate multiple log messages for demonstration purposes and sends them back to the Flutter side. In Flutter a receiving message stream decides whether to pass them on to the UI as functional message or write them as technical log messages for example in the console. Here is an example displayed in the chat interface and here are the messages that land in the app console. Just to make it clear once again, IOTA's libraries are not yet being used here. But knowing how logging works is valuable. The added value of this video is that I demonstrate how to build the app on Android, macOS and iOS. Let's start. Use the tutorial as a guide. Navigate to the section titled Logging Example App. I've prepared some helpful tips and code snippets. Make sure to read through that information related to naming. To get started I'm using the terminal app to check my tools. According to Flutter Doctor everything looks good and Rust up show confirms that I have installed the necessary targets to cross compile for macOS, iOS and Android. I navigate to the directory where I want my project to be located. Then I create a new Flutter project called logging underscore example underscore app. Next I launch VS code and continue working in the terminal from there. Close any pop-up windows. I create the Rust folder and the Rust library project within it. You see a new folder is created together with the source directory and cargo tommel. I follow the modified workflow that I have explained in the tutorial. Setting up the Flutter Rust bridge consists of installing the core code generator and the build time dependency of Flutter. It's all a copy and paste work. Continue to install the required Dart runtime components of the code generator and some specific dependencies if you want to use enum structs, which you may want. To install the runtime dependency on the Rust side, I copy and paste the necessary content into the cargo toml file, which also involves preparing the dependencies for the logger. For the logging example app, I have separated the logger class from the API and I need to create and fill both classes. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see, the public function publish message contains the core logic. It creates several log messages that process the incoming message. Additionally, I must integrate the sources as a module into the lib.rs file. Upon saving librs, the compiler generates an error message, which is indicated by red colored file names. They are about a missing trait for the struct log entry. This issue is a known bug, but fortunately there is a workaround available. So far we have saved our Rust code, which resulted in an error. The recommended workaround is to generate our Dart interface code in the next step. I'll use the code generation command for Android, since I plan to create the app first for Android. In the terminal I execute the command. After generating two files, you still notice the compile error. However, in the background Flutter Rust Bridge has created the missing trait and you only need to trigger the compilation process by making any change in the code. When you save the file again, the compiler runs and the error disappears. Now we will execute all steps related to setting up the Flutter Rust Bridge for Android. The Android Native Development Kit is a set of tools provided by Google that allows developers to include native code in their Android apps. This is a minor fix. And this code snippet ensures that the build process cross compiles and builds the native library as well. For the moment we will skip the macOS and iOS parts and focus on completing the Flutter code. Firstly, we will create the FFI Dart file, which is a helper class used to load the library. Next, we can proceed with creating the main Dart file. This file contains the code for building a chat UI and making calls to our Rust API. Simply copy all the necessary code to get started. A lot of exceptions are occurring due to missing package dependencies. There are two ways to solve this issue. The first one is to search for the package in the public repository. As example, I'm searching the package flutter chat UI and install it using the flutter pub add command. The second way is to use the context menu, click on the quick fix item and select the option add package name to dependencies. Then you have to repeat it for each missing dependency. Finally, all required packages have been successfully installed and the exceptions have been resolved. As everything is set up, we can now launch the Android emulator and select it as the run target. After that, we can launch the app. If everything is OK, you will notice the compilation step in red. But this time red isn't bad. The logger was initialized and I can enter a message. I expect that my message will be returned and is added to the chat history. Additionally, I expect that my messages will be printed to the console. As you can see, that's the case. But hey, what about the trace log? It's not there. Let's check our API. 
The code is present, but the reason for the trace message not being displayed is that the log level of our logger class is set to debug. This means that the trace message will be suppressed. All other messages are forwarded to Flutter. There is a single message that has been treated as a functional message. However, this is determined by a basic string analysis rule, which may not be the most optimal solution. On Flutter's side, the tag property is evaluated. And if this is a certain string, in this case my underscore tag, then this message will be forwarded to the chat history. You will find other ways. All other log messages are forwarded to the console. Let's now move on to the macOS app. There is a common step where we install the cargo Xcode command. This will enable us to create a new Xcode project inside of your Rust folder. Now we can use the command cargo Xcode. Look on the left side. A new Xcode project has been created. Let's generate the Dart interface for macOS. The command is quite similar to the Android setup, but there's one difference. The bridge underscore generated header file should be copied into the macOS runner directory. In the next step, the new Rust Xcode project must be integrated as a sub-project into the macOS Xcode project. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully and understand which project should be dragged into which one. So here I opened the macOS Xcode project and in Finder I switch to the Rust directory where you will find the Rust Xcode project. Drag it into the Runner Xcode project, then it's a sub-project. The Runner target has a build phase where you have to include the dynamic libraries and in the build settings adjust the Objective-C bridging header. The value should be runner slash bridge underscore generated h, the header file that we just created. To avoid compilation errors, set the minimum deployment target to 13.1. To avoid that our library code is not evaluated as dead code, we must force the app to use our library and we do it by including a dummy function into App Delegate Swift. And as a very last step for the macOS setup, we have to ensure that the dynamic library is found. The workaround is described in the tutorial. We have to search for two occurrences of this line and have to add the instruction dlib install name base equals to target build directory. Now we can start our app as macOS application. We select it as target and launch it by pressing start debugging. After some time, the app is launched and you can test it.
It's working. Now let's move on to the instructions for iOS. In the tutorial you can find instructions for generating code for iOS. The command is similar to the one for macOS, but the generated header file will be copied into the iOS folder instead. After executing the command, the generated header file is available. Next I repeat the subproject creation step, but this time I drag the Rust Xcode project into the iOS runner Xcode project. The next difference compared to macOS is that for iOS we need to link the generated static library to the runner target. Now let's switch to VS Code and make some adjustments to the header file running bridging header.h. We'll need to add a line to import our generated file bridge underscore generated dot h. Next we will adjust the app delegate dot swift file by adding some dummy code to let the app use our library. Great, we are all set to go. Let's start the iOS simulator now. Meanwhile, I will tidy up the IDE before launching the app. Opening the main Dart file will display the Start button which I click to initiate and test the app on iOS. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more details, check out the GitHub page and read the tutorial. Or follow me on Twitter and YouTube. Cheers and goodbye.